the second Australian art car can almost be seen as the opposite to the first Australian art car. Created by an artist who was the youngest student ever to be admitted to the Art School of Sydney, he later moved on to become a famous artist, and he created, among other things, the logo for the Sydney Olympics, as well as this car. In 1989, another Australian designed the eighth art car, Ken Dunn. However, as opposed to the Aborigine Nelson, he stood for the then modern Australia. In my opinion, it belongs to the highlights of this collection that it took a new direction at the end of the 80s. The art car series is meant to reflect the whole world. Ken Dunn paints the happiness of his homeland, its countryside, sunshine and beaches. In the time in which we live, I like to use art to try and make beautiful things, yeah. And so is his painting so positive, carnal and cheerful that you get the feeling it was the beach fashion of the coming season. And Don wants to show the Australian zest for life through the art car. He takes his inspiration from the fish. I'm in that particular area, wanted it to be something about speed. As a second motif template, Dunn chooses an abstract form of a parrot for his art car. Even when they're just standing still, they look as though they're really about to move very fast, which I think is the great thing about a BMW. It looks as though it's about to go. With I thought it was just the most fantastic uh, honor imaginable and such, um, such a great thing to do. The next BMW art car artist opened up an entire new continent, Asia. We could work together with one of the most renowned Japanese artists who during his lifetime gathered a lot of international prices. He covered the entire BMW art car with an airbrush dress and at the same time rested his inspiration deeply within Japanese art historical traditions. In 1990, the first Asian Japanese artist Matazu Kayama designs an art car the fourth continent after Europe, America and Australia. Kayama is, Kayama is a much celebrated artist in Japan. In Asia, he was, if you so wish, on a par with other artists in the West. On his art car, Kayama shows a typical Asian countryside. He's working with foil, gold and silver. It is a very quiet painting, not loud, but the closer you get, the more of its treasures get revealed, no doubt. The whole thing is supposed to look like snow or a form of snow crystals. I want to give it the form of snow. Kayama is drawing the river of life through the snowscape. He puts motion to the design which is applied with a certain technique, usually used for precious jewelry boxes. Because the original form, the one that makes this work possible for me, was already very attractive. But I only had the feeling the work was completed when the BMW emblem was applied. At the point, I was as happy as a little child. He thought it was fabulous that a German company wanted to do that with a Japanese artist, as opposed to German company equals German artist. It was an experiment in which one thing led to another. This is the final result. The whole thing was quite a lot of fun. With this BMW art car, we welcome Southern Europe to the series. A Spanish avant-garde artist created this car. And no matter whether he worked as a sculptor or as a painter, or whether he created gardens or houses as an architect, he was always inspired by a particular stretch of his home country, Lanzarote. And it is this island that we find expressed on top of this car. In 1990, César Manrique becomes the second European to design an art car. The Spanish world regards him a pioneer of abstract art and as the trailblazer of surrealism. César Manrique, is the, César Manrique is the Spaniard in the circle, an outstanding personality. A gentleman. Truly a gentleman. 
With Manrique, there was the thought of trying out different fields as well. Manrique is a multi-talent. He is a gardener, sculptor, architect and environmental activist. His heart, however, belongs to painting. To be an artist isn't really a profession. You're born that way. For me, painting is the essence of my life. The colors of the art car mirror those of his homeland, Lanzarote. Lava beaches, the rainforest, the sea, and they show his understanding of cars. When I wonder about the general senses of a car, my first thought is that it's supposed to serve quick transportation. And when I think of speed, I first think of a bird, a butterfly, a dragonfly. That's why I wanted to design the BMW gliding through space without any resistance. One detail catches one's eye especially, the wing mirror. As if we want to say, look here, the art car is looking at you. With this BMW art car, two very significant entities meet. On the one hand, the only German artist of the BMW art car series, and on the other hand, the only roadster, the Z1. Both don't want to fit into the system, and both don't fit into the system. So the BMW art car artist takes the entire car for his secret language that is comprised of symbols and forms and archaic looking shapes that call out to be decoded. Shortly after German reunification, the first German artist paints an art car, with little reference to the car and a lot of irony. I have only ever been a passenger, for many years. I have only been a BMW passenger. Unusual car, unusual artist. Hank designs a Z1, a high-tech prototype in 1991. It is the first BMW with concealable doors. In black paint, Pink applies his idiosyncratic art to the glaring red roadster. Well, every artist is like a general who knows his battle order and has a soldier's on call to be used as needed. Pank's always been provoking. In the old days, artists painted the sun, the cornfield. Today, everything is a bit more abstract. The way Pank paints the car has also been unique until now. He got himself into the right mood by playing the drums just to feel the vibration, and then he dealed with the car again for another 15 minutes. The result of the jazz painting session is an art car which presents you with more riddles than answers. About the meanings, Pank keeps quiet to this day. The interesting thing about a work of art is not what it actually shows, but first that it is shown, and then how it is shown, you need to assume that you can think anything about it. 